So the final step in our analysis is to find the reaction forces at A and the reaction forces at B. Now, I've drawn here the free body diagram of this system. First of all, the weight acts at the center of gravity, which we just found. Support A is a fixed support, so the object cannot move in X or Y at point A. It's completely fixed. Because it's completely fixed and it can't move in any direction, there must be a reaction force in each direction, one in X, one in Y. You always get two reaction forces at a fixed joint. Now, it doesn't matter which way you draw these. If you drew them the wrong way, you'll find out in the end because your reaction force will be equal to minus something. It'll be a negative value. And a lot of times you can't tell which way it's going, so my rule is pick right and up always. Since support B is a sliding support, there's a small wheel here so it can move left and right, it means there's no reaction force in the left and right direction. There's no X reaction force, nothing to stop it from moving. But there is a reaction force in the Y direction. The weight of this thing is pushing down onto this support and there's a reaction force opposing that pushing motion. Now, let's find the reaction force. And the method we're going to use is the method of moments. So what we're going to say is, we're going to say the sum, I'll put this equation here, the sum of moments, always pick anticlockwise as positive, about point A equals zero. I've picked point A as my pivot. You can pick any point on the system to be a pivot when the system is in equilibrium like this. Now, first force, if we look at these two forces here, these two are acting through our pivot. Whenever a force acts through the pivot, looks going through it, then those forces have a zero turning effect. So we do not consider these two forces in our equation. That's part of the reason why I chose A as the pivot. So I cancel these two forces in this equation, not in general. They only cancel in this equation that we're going to do. So the equation is going to be, starting with this force here, this force is the weight mg force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the force to the pivot, which is this distance here, which is our x bar. Now that you can see here the force, the distance, the force applying to this distance will make it go clockwise. So it's going to be negative because anticlockwise is positive. So it's going to be minus 1.34 g, that's the force, multiplied by the distance, which is our x-bar, which we calculated previously to be 10.56, plus the next force. There's only one more force left, and that's this force here. This force is rby, and this force is multiplied by this perpendicular distance to here. So force times perpendicular distance to the pivot. This will make it go anticlockwise. See? Force anticlockwise around the pivot. So it's going to be positive. R B Y multiplied by the distance which is this distance here from here all the way to the pivot. 5 plus 10 plus 8. 8 plus 5 is 13 plus 10 is 23. 23 centimeters equals zero. Now, solving this equation gives you R B Y is equal to 6.03 newtons. Now, in order to calculate R A X and R A Y, we could take moments again about a different point so that they do not cancel. Or we could just use the sum of force equation, because we know the sum of forces in x and y is both equal to zero, because the system is in equilibrium. So let's do x first. Sum 
of force in x equals 0. I'm going to pick right as positive, it doesn't matter which way because there's no acceleration. Now, we only have one force in x, so R A X. there's no other force in x, so it's just R A X equals 0. And the reason this happens is because there's no other force to oppose R A X. R A X is the only force in the x direction, and the system is not accelerating, so this must be equal to 0. Now, final equation, sum of force in y is equal to 0. Again, it doesn't matter which way you choose because there's no acceleration. I'm going to pick up as positive. Now, for this equation, we have RAY going up plus RBY also going up minus 1.34G, which is going down, equals 0. Now, we're looking for RAY plus RBY, which we have is 6.03 minus 1.34G is equal to 0. From this, we can deduce that RAY is equal to 7.11 newtons. Now, the question gave us some maximum values for these supports. It said the maximum that A can handle is 10 and you can see the force on A is 7.11 so A is okay we'll handle the support handle the force and RBY the maximum that B could handle was 8 since this is less than 8 then B is also safe so both supports can handle their respective loads